This is Harry Murray at Murray's Flash Shop in Edinburgh, Virginia. Let's talk about the trout fishing we get in the Shenandoah National Park in March. The shot you see there is ideal. These fish are feeding on the nymphs. They're feeding on some of the adults. And you notice I make a half-hearted approach there to be, be, you know, present a very cautious approach. The area right up in through here is where what I would expect to catch these fish on nymphs and right over along in there. These nymphs that, uh, that hatch this time of the year, this is the Eplis pluralis mayfly nymph, and we match that with the beadhead Mr. Rapidan. Those are in the downstream side of the riffles, and that is about the full size of the nymph. That nymph, uh, size-wise, we talk about size 14 when they're hatching. But this is what I would fish upstream dead drift in most of that water. Now, I like to use the one we call the, uh, the nymph leader. We build that with two scientific angler indicators on that to help detect the strike. We use 5X because that gives us a good drift. But I'm really watching these two SA indicators when I'm fishing upstream dead drift. Now, once they have, this is the emerger. That comes off the stream bottom flies, goes over to the tree limbs, sheds its skin, comes back as what you see there is a spinner. In the old days we called that the quill gordon. Uh, we match that real well with the Mr. Rapidan parachute dry. This occurs probably by the middle of the sun, middle of March. Early in the year we're strictly on the nymphs, but by the middle of the March I'm pretty much fishing that the whole time and catching plenty of fish. Now, here's a good friend of mine who's fishing the dry fly. You can see his line coming around there, and there's the dry fly. The trout tend to hold on the edge of where the fast water meets the slow water. He'll drift his fly right along in there. Zap! He's about to get a strike right there in all honesty. That's the kind of water, after he catches that one, he'll come over to this side and run a dry fly along those edges. This is very effective because this Eplis pluralis is one of the heaviest hatches we have in the mountain. I remember some years ago we had an outstanding hatch. When I was hiking out of a high ridge coming back to the stream in the evening when the spinners and the duns were on the water, I honestly think I was seeing more than a thousand flies in the air that evening. But that is a way to go. But now this, this is the blue quill. This is a very fragile fly. That's the natural. And then this is the blue quill that we use. He's honestly about a size 16. He's very fragile. In periods of cold water, when he can't dry his flies to fly away or even out on the bank, be in good shape to fly back, many times he's shunted out into the back eddies. And he'll just float round and around back there. And then I go to the actually blue quill dry and get outstanding fishing. But that is a good way to go. Now, this is the book I wrote on the Shenandoah National Park where this would be of value for you in fishing, especially in March, but also through the entire season. I have hatch charts in there. Art Flick helped me identify these flies many years ago, and there were about 10 mayflies, uh, two stoneflies, one... Uh, couple caddis in there that we do in a seasonal sequence. So the hatch chart that we have in the book will help you tremendously on all of this. If we can help you anyway, please get in touch with us.